versus new is taken on. And of course, old media companies have uh, to act upon the changing environment they're facing. And in many cases, this calls for some kind of strategic renewal and uh, experimenting with new media. And moving into new media, then, necessarily as an entrepreneurial act. And what I'm trying to do here is that I attempt to investigate the sort of combining then the old and the new by applying the concept of entrepreneurial orientation. Now, I assume that most of you might not be familiar with this concept, so I'll give you um, a quick introduction to what this is about. Now, entrepreneurial orientation starts out with Miller's work, as you can see from um, 83 already, in which he suggests that a company's degree of entrepreneurship is displayed by the extent um, to which the company innovates, to which it takes risks, and to which it acts proactively. Now, Miller has also developed a scale to actually empirically measure this, um, and um, the instrument that he was developing was later refined by Covenant Levin, as you see down there, who suggested that there are three dimensions of entrepreneurial orientation which characterize the entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial behavior of firm. And that these the three dimensions have to be taken together as a unidimensional concept to understand um, entrepreneurship. Now, innovativeness refers to the attempt to embrace creativity, to experiment, to foster new ideas, and so forth, both in, in terms of products, but also in terms of processes. Risk-taking refers to taking <coughs> personal risks, business risks, financial risks of entrepreneurs, uh, committing resources uh, to, uh, for example, developing uh, new uh, um, business ideas. And proactiveness refers to the forward-looking um, <coughs> behavior, of trying to establish some kind of first move advantage um, and uh, trying to sort of move ahead of the, um, of the competition. Now, these three dimensions, which are at the core of the entrepreneurial orientation concept, are by now very widely used in the entrepreneurship field. They are very well esta established. Now, a few years later then, two other people, Lumpkin and Dess, suggested that while these three dimensions are important, two further dimensions would have to be added, namely, competitive aggressiveness and autonomy. Now, competitive aggressiveness uh, refers to um, how the firm uh, relates to its competitors, how it tries to sort of get ahead of, of, the com uh, of its competitors in the field company. For example, the CEO has by now become a leading expert for, in, in, uh, in Austria for the northern Italian region. And he received a phone call a couple of weeks ago from the head of an old-timer club. Uh, he asked him for help organizing a trip from Germany through Austria down to this northern Italian region. They wanted to visit some vineyards, eat well, stay in nice hotels, and uh, because they had seen the web page and sort of seen all his uh, comments there, uh, I asked him to organize that. So again, there are new business opportunities emerging from these initially developed uh, capabilities here. Um, and these three dimensions seem to really sort of reinforce uh, each other uh, rather much. Now, what can we conclude from this then? Uh, firstly, I think, yes, um, in this case I've seen that uh, that the sort of the facets of the different dimensions and also how these change over time. And I think that definitely more in-depth qualitative work is needed using this concept of entrepreneurial orientation. And what is also rather evident is that two dimensions that are, are absolute key for the entrepreneurial behavior, the success of that in this company, are missing in the current concept. concept. Namely, firstly, there's nothing about the customer focus in the concept. And Aiming specifically at this customer group of the 50 <coughs> pluses was key to their success. Because they actually, they, um, um, as there aren't that many specific offerings to that age group, often you'll see that there are, for example, sites aiming at um, sort of 50 till 100. But 
As you can imagine, the, the consumer patterns of a, an 80-year-old are very different to a 50-year-old. So it doesn't really make sense to take such a wide, uh, undifferentiated customer um, segment. So this customer focus is really key here, and it's not at all covered in, in, this, in the concept otherwise. And also I've pointed out how the capabilities that were developed over time were used then to pursue further opportunities. And sort of a rather sort of dynamic view of, of, of what is going on there. And that is not um, covered either. It is not really, if looking at entrepreneurial behavior isn't really sort of, uh, doesn't make sense with some kind of snapshot view. I think you need to take into consideration what actually happens over time. So I would propose that sort of these two dimensions might have to be added to the concept and um, yes, I suppose the next step would be to try to operationalize that in a way that it could also be included into uh, and tested in uh, more quantitative work.